One of the biggest downsides of having a typical backup water system is that you need to have a separate tank in line and then have a pump to supply the house. This uses a lot of electricity, especially if you have a backup tank permanently cycling its water, as is ideal. In this video, we're going to show you an innovative way to have a backup water supply with no electricity and virtually no maintenance required. Or, at least that was the plan. We ended up with quite a few snags along the way, so now this is a video showing you what we learned in the process and definitely found a lot, lot of things that you need to look out for when doing a deal. Let's jump into the detail. Basically, what we want to do is swap the pressure that's already provided by the municipal water line. This will allow us to keep using the water as normally if there's a disruption in supply. To do this, we're, use, we're using a pressurized buffer tank that uses a rubber divider and air pressure to store the water at the pressure which it comes in at. This then compresses the, the air on the other side of the rubber. We did this project with compression fittings and copper pipe because that's what um, my house used. But honestly, after this experience, I don't think I would use the compression copper fitting pipes again as they end up being quite expensive and they're quite difficult to, to work with and get everything sealed if you're trying to do a neat compact setup. But basically what we try to do here is to just use a hacksaw, some fittings, thread sealing tape, two shiftings, and eventually we had to add, add a Dremel tool to remove some paint off of the existing house's piping, but to try and keep it as simple DIY as possible. First step, is actually planning out how you would want to connect everything. And in our case, our very first initial design didn't quite end up being exactly how we ended up using it. But for the most part, it always helps to just pack out everything and plan what you're going to do. As you use the water, the pressure will decrease, but it means you will not need a pump to get pressurized water. As with all good things, there are downsides to this approach. The main one here is that the pressurized tanks quite, cost quite a bit more per size than a standard normal tank. If you are just having short outages, then the upside is you don't need much backup water. If, however, you are without water for a few days at a time, a setup with a large tank and a pump is probably the way to go. For some perspective, a modern efficient toilet uses between 4 to 6 litres for flushing, while some older toilets used as much as 20 litres per flush. A sweet spot price-wise for the pressurised buffer tanks is a 100 to 150 litre tank. So if we assume that a modern toilet uses 5 litres to flush and another 2 litres to wash hands, then from a small 100 litre tank, you can get up to 14 toilet flush, flushes and uses for washing hands when your water supply turns off. It's a little bit more complicated than that, as with these buffer tanks, you're most likely not going to get the full rated capacity, as the incoming water pressure determines how much water is stored. But even if you're getting 10 toilet flushes out of the tank, you're going to save yourself a lot of unpleasant experiences. Another major bonus with using this type of tank is that it absorbs pressure waves from water hammer. Water hammer is high pressure waves that travel back through the pipes when someone quickly closes a tap or a mixer. This can damage appliances, geysers, and water filtration equipment. If you often hear a doof or a knock when closing your taps, this means you're getting high pressure spikes in your pipe system. This can seriously affect the lifespan of some appliances and equipment that are on the water line. The pressure tank gives these high pressure spikes a safe place to discharge in, thus extending the lifespan of your pipes and of other appliances. Now let's see what's actually involved with setting up a backup system like this. First, you want to identify the point where the water enters the house. This is normally also where your pressure regulator will be. The pressure regulator is typically even a, either a 4 or a 6 bar regulator. This depends on the rating of the geyser you have installed. Once you've found it, you need to check how the water line can be diverted after it and then find a location close by where you could fit the pressurized tank and begin planning out your piping. 
the pressurized buffer tanks only actually have one pipe for in and out as the water pressure pushes the water in and then the air pressure pushes the water back out. So it's a simple single hose to connect. We normally recommend using these braided flexible hoses simply as it allows you to still be able to move the tank. And if you need to do maintenance in the area, it just makes it easier if the tank isn't impossible to move. What we are building here with all of these fittings is basically a setup of valves so you can switch over to the backup water when the water supply fails, but that through a non return, the backup tank is still being filled even while. It's not connected to the house. So basically that if the water fails, you can just flip over some valves and then you have access to the water in the tank. This mainly is to prevent um, you from by accident just using all the water in the tank if the water fails and only then realizing, oh, oops, there's no water left and then you have a bit of an awkward situation. What we're doing here is we're connecting the house to basically run as normal but at the same time we're filling the tank through a non-return so the tank should always have the highest pressure that would have been supplied by the municipal line and then we have valves to isolate the tank for if some for some reason we want to do any maintenance to the tank or disconnect it and we have a valve to turn on and off the supply from the mains to the house and then turn on and off the supply from the tank um, to the house. Make very sure that your water supply is turned off before you actually start cutting into your house's water pipes as that would be a big mess and honestly it's probably one of the most uncomfortable parts of the installation is having to cut into your existing pipework. Once we cut the existing pipework we had to actually clean the paint off of the pipes as all the pipes are painted and you wouldn't be able to get a good seal on the pipes unless it's a clean copper you're dealing with. So here we ended up having to pull out the Dremel and just polish the, the paint off of the edge of the pipes. At this point, we thought we were basically done. The leak testing everything mostly looked good, one or two small leaks, and then we had a surprise. The main water valve actually cracked, and this is a risk when doing something like this. And as you can see here, it was spraying out water even if the valve is closed. So unfortunately, it seems to have cracked on the main municipal side instead of on the side where we were actually working. This meant we needed a few things. First, we needed to shut off the main municipal supply to the property. And then secondly, we needed a new main valve and we had to cut into the line again and clean it again with the Dremel in order to um, replace it and put a new incoming line for for the house. This unfortunately completely um, threw our timelines out and that unfortunately is the risk when doing a DIY project is that it takes a lot longer than you expect sometimes if things go wrong. Fortunately this wasn't a too difficult fix to do and managed to still finish it in the same day. Just before dark, we managed to get everything together and everything looked good. Unfortunately, taking everything apart again gave us quite a few leaks. So we spent the next half an hour just fixing all the little leaks that happened to pop up again. An important thing to just check is if you've got a pressure relief valve on the geyser itself. As if you're switching over to the backup system, you're in effect blocking the geysers water from getting to the pressure relief valve. On top of the pressurized buffer tank there's a little cap that you can take off and you can actually measure your incoming water pressure and the pressure in the tank just with a normal tire pressure gauge here. Unfortunately for us we were, this was in a time of water restrictions so we ended up with only 2.7 bar pressure on the municipal line which didn't give us a great capacity in the tank. This is how the valves would be configured just for filling the tank and normal operation for the house, where in effect the feed to the non-return is open, so the tank can fill up with water. The valve connecting the tank to the house is closed, and then the bypass for the tank is open. This basically allows the house to get water as normal, but the tank to fill up with water from the municipal side. 
when you find that you have no water in the house, all you basically then need to do is close the bypass um, for the tank, so the one going upwards, and then open the valve from the tank. And this will allow you to get water from the tank then. Just remember to come check and see if you've got um, your water supply back, because as mentioned earlier, you're bypassing your pressure regulator. So if there's something goes wrong with the geyser and it builds up a lot of pressure, then um, you haven't got the protection of the pressure relief valve in the way we've installed it here. So it's really only for sort of a situation where you're sitting without water for a few hours and just need to run, run the toilet. In our tests at the moment, unfortunately, we were not getting that many flushes out of it. We were only getting about 10 toilet flushes out of the 150 litre tank. And this is due to the very low pressure we have of the 2.7 bar. And this is because at the moment we're in water restrictions here. So the municipalities turned down the incoming pressure, thus making the tank not as effective as we would normally expect it to be. So we'll definitely follow up on this and try and see what it would be like if we actually, when we actually get our proper pressure back and how many flushes we get when it's working.